Because one, we you voted on one. I mean, I can change and document that, but that's why I put. Um, so the six ten and the six twenty are the times they left. No, they came. So Ruth came in at six ten, and Todd was here at six twenty. Well, and then they left, and both were gone, and both were here for the ordinance, the salary ordinance, because that was the critical piece. And then. Right, but neither were here for the resolution because you you guys skipped the ordinance waiting on Todd to get here and came back to it. Okay. But I mean I can if you I can modify it if you prefer and document that you two they meet your standards and that's fine. I just this is thought maybe somebody could look at that yeah, that's up, it's up to the council. It doesn't say anything that's true. But if you think if you think it'd be better to clarify um, in, in that second paragraph of the ordinances, which two council officials were moving because of the vote, that would be accurate as well. I don't, I don't think it's deficient uh, if you left it the way it is, but if you want to make it more informative, then the will be a difference. So, do you want to what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to approve this presentation. Second. Didn't All right. So then let me ask this then moving forward, Marty. Would you prefer that I document that more detailed? If that happens again? I, I don't have a preference one way or the other. I just I, I a year or two years from now, if somebody looks back and why was it a four zero and a six zero? Well, and that's why I usually try I mean, to put the time in. Just seems a little cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can certainly do that and add add a note somewhere besides just in, at the top where their time in is. Okay. It's, yeah, it's fine. Okay. And I apologize, Marty. You moved to approve. Yeah. Ryan seconded. Seconded. Four zero. Thank you. <laughs> to clarify that. Yeah. Now, see, this is what happens. I, I write them absent, and then they come in. You were an exception. Can we yeah. All right, and Board of Public Works and Safety was for information only. Uh, any questions, comment on that? Anyone? Okay, um, we did have added to communications the area plan BZA. Uh, shout out saying that David would like to re up for five years. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse <laughs> me? No, David, David uh, Rowe's term is up December 31st and he does not want to continue, so we have an open spot. That is our uh, appointee, so we need to, I think by the next meeting, come up with uh, an appointee for the next year. Is it a one year term? Three. Is it three or four? Four. 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 And um, if you BZA guys, and Planning Commission. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Would you guys like to join? You want to turn the lights on back? Or you all want to stay in the dark? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, the president of the Planning Commission, I also like to point out that the way the rules are, 
if you don't find a replacement, they stay on until you do. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. I'm <coughs> sick at every meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to have some candidates for the next meeting. Um, down to old business, the ARPA plan. Um, we have, we can't spend any of that money until we have a plan in place. We have set December 31st as our kind of plan as the council to come up with a plan. Um, I don't think we've been fully staffed at a council meeting for the last several meetings, have we? Um, and only a few of us have filled out the survey, so unless you guys object, I'd like to push it to next month, and then we'll try and get everyone to get that survey filled out, and then once we get we get the plan, we'll contract with Baker Tilly to write or put it in a proposal together, put the plan together, and then we can start dispersing those funds. Any objections? All right, uh, new business. Mr. Wilson, Jay Wilson, here. Is not here, I don't see him. Okay, that is the Rochester Church of God had, it was in your packet, had submitted a mural request. Mm -hmm. They want to put a mural on either the north or south side of uh, their, I think it's their gymnasium or their activity center here on Main Street right beside uh, be quick loop. Yep. Car repair shop. And because it actually is in our historical corridor and it is visible from Main Street, the consensus when I contacted Indiana Landmarks, of course they, they pretty much are kind of trying to stay neutral on it, but their opinion is that it is not they they're not in favor of murals uh, especially in a historic corridor um, now okra which is funding agencies for different organizations our main street programs stuff like that the revitalization we just did msrp they have a different opinion uh, same basically the same as indiana landmarks if you're going to do murals keep it off of the main just do it in your alleys or do it on back streets so this one, because the building is pretty much right there, and it's visible on all sides, I don't know what your opinion would be on allowing it. The other concern um, that could possibly be raised is, although it is owned by a church, if they were to move forward with one of these murals that is a depiction of Christ, if that would, here we go again with this whole freedom of speech. Uh, I'm not concerned yeah. about that issue. But. So. I don't know if anyone else is. I think enough is enough on that. What's okay. what's in that building now? It's the Church of God's. Um, I think it's their activity center. Yep, that's the one. That's the one on the east side. Yeah, it's the one where the repair shop is. It's that building just to the north. Right? It's kind of got the yellow brick on the front, and the sides are white. M McCords? McCords, thank you. Yes, yeah. next it's, to McCords. It's right next to McCords? Yeah. That's it. Well, they're saying north or south. Yes, yes, between 4th and 5th yeah. on the <laughs> east side of the road. I'm sorry, Brian. You're saying right? north or south side? Yeah, the north or south side of the building. Are both visible from the main? Because originally they wanted the south side, and then when uh, Mr. Wilson came back in, he said, well, or we could put it on the north, and I said, the problem is, is either side of that building, north or south, is visible from Main Street. And, and again, while I, I think their, their images or what they've chosen is pretty compared to a plain white wall, I just, again, we have a historical corridor we have to be conscious of when we do these things, or you guys allow a variance for it. And I know we've got some murals started in alleyways, um, and one of them is visible, two of them are visible from Main Street, and that has been raised as a concern, but it got done before we got a hold of it, so they're there. I may say something. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. The um, one concern I would have, you know, I, I'm not opposed to the mural as much as putting paint on brick. You know, so the long-term consequence of painting brick is potentially damaging. So that they could a, a potential option would be to put a board up there and then paint the board, attach it to the brick, and then if you know 20 years from now they no longer own that building and it's in disrepair, they could either take the board down, and you haven't damaged the um, the brick. Is it actually brick or cinder block on that? Side? I don't know. I'm thinking the, it's from that front view, it's brick, but I don't know what the side looks so like. I'm thinking the side is cinder block because it looks, if I remember correctly, it looks bigger. It's on, it is a cinder block. It is cinder. That's what I was thinking. It's cinder, and I don't know if that is makes paint adhere differently whether it's brick or cinder block. I don't know. I don't know enough about that. To we did get an opinion letter one time from. Stark landmarks are shared with the council probably when we were discussing another mural project and um, you know their their concerns is that there's some plan in place that it, what's going to happen when this mural is no longer in good condition you know if they own the building it's a much easier decision but <coughs> once it starts um, if, if somebody else is putting this up are they going to be responsible for upgrading it or whatever so. Um, we do support murals downtown, but it's just to be aware that everybody needs to be aware of what the potential future costs can be. I mean, the situation they have at Akron right now is quite a mess with that historic painting they put next to Good to Go, where it, you know the brick has fallen apart, and building owner building has changed hands. And, We would do anything without Tim being here to present what he wanted to present. I mean, do we want to make a decision I, without at least? Yeah, I'm not. Sure. I'm kind of not surprised he's not here. Um, when he came in, he really, I, he was okay with whatever decision the council went with. So I wasn't 100 percent certain that he would be here tonight. Although I reminded him, you know, when the meeting was. But that's up to you guys if you want to. If one of you wants to reach out or have me reach out to him to see. But I, I think that he would be, he's okay with the decision if you are comfortable in making one. I said they were just trying to make it look better. Than, I think it's white right now. Just yeah, kind of white. Uh, I'm okay reaching out to him, getting some more info. To and with the, the, with the four options presented, were they asking not just for permission, but also the council to decide which option? Or no, that he, those were just the ideas. I don't know that those so they're were not the final. Set on no, one, so it those were just the, totally different. Right. It's just that's the. I think that the what I gathered was their consensus was is they wanted something more with the. You know the kind of the skyline that's type the, thing that's the one i like the best I, yeah I, I would think before they come to us they should have their plan which and i know which one it is so because i we don't want to just write a blank check if we choose that i that tried option. to i tried to explain that all right well i volunteer marty to reach out to him and get some more information. <laughs> i have his phone number in my office marty <laughs> <laughs> I've been on these trains before. I can give him a call, so let's, let's uh, move that to next month. Okay, so who's going to okay. reach out? I'll reach out to him. Okay. Brian, I would recommend the city take no position on the content, content or aesthetics. No, no, no. I, we just want them to right. identify what they want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just um, for clarification. Yeah, I yeah. Do, yeah. All right, Mr. Wyatt here? Right here. Okay, we are down to you on the agenda. Okay. Um, thank you for letting me in. come before you this evening. My name's Gary Wyatt. I own the building at 716 Main Street, which was uh, just south of uh, the Old Bailey Hardware, which was Karen Brown's beauty salon. I purchased that uh, a couple of years ago, and I've redone the inside, uh, finished it just this last year. Uh, Total Body Works is in there right now, and they've been there for about a year. Well, I'm looking to uh, 
I was looking to finish the facade in front of the building. I didn't know until about three weeks ago that he had an ordinance on metal. And uh, um, I had come up with a plan and uh, to have that done actually a couple weeks ago and then I found out. And anyway, that's why I'm here in front of you now. I met with Harry and the Planning Commission and showed them the artist rendition uh, of what I have. Uh, I believe they approve of it, and I wanted to show you what I kind of what I've got going. I've got some uh, drawings here. Do I see? Sure, that's crazy. Bring them. I've looked at this building from across the street way more than once. I'm just not throwing something at it. I sort of have an uh, artist eye view, and uh, I thought what I, what I have in mind would enhance that corner right there as well as this uh, building around it. I brought some samples of the, of the metal of what I'd like to use. I have a professional that's going to do it for me. He's done it for me before. It worked for me before. And, uh, and uh, I'll show you what I've got going here. I'm trying to use like a flat, not shiny stuff, except for the copper. The flat is the, uh, the flat black here for the awning. This is for the vertical right here. As you see in the in there, the brown, mm -hmm. and this will be all enhanced or wrapped with the copper. And over a period of time, this will patina nicely. It'll get a nice sort of dull sort of looking finish to it over time. So this is my thought on it, and uh, like I say, I haven't gone into it half-heartedly. I've thought about it for a long time. I'm real proud of that little building. I'd like to see it nice. How how many how far out is the uh, Mansard Park going to be? Oh, this here? Yeah, the black. I think it's only. A it's going to be the existing. Yeah, it's it's going to be existing. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's all there. It's all existing. It's only 24 feet wide. The whole thing. It's not really that old at all. Yeah, it's probably <coughs> two, three feet from the building. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come way out. <coughs> the um, historic guidelines uh, say that um, you know they could put up cloth awnings for repair metal awnings. It doesn't say metal awnings are prohibited. The only place it kind of calls into question is metal on vertical faces. And, and this building is a lower profile building. It's right. you know, only one story and the metal portion above the awning is only going to be a couple feet. A couple feet and it yeah. currently has like a wood, old wood siding on there. So he's going to remove that siding and, mm -hmm. and put the, uh, the metal there over top of the brick. Looks like a significant upgrade over what's there. Yeah, that cedar. Oh, yeah, the cedar shape thing is just not good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We reviewed that through, through the design committee and they don't have any objection. Okay, thank you. Um, pleasure of the council. Is okay? Extreme variance. I'll entertain a motion to approve the plan. So I would move to approve the uh, proposed change. We frame a metal frame. We frame. just put shingles on it. That's what it goes to. He's going to make. He's not going to remove the frame. He's going to leave the frame there and just put the metal, take the shingles off and put this metal. Sorry, that's right. You can do this one and be a person. All right. All right. My bad. Community Resource Center. That would be Marty. <laughs> You, you, you can want kick that me one to off. start that one yeah, off? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll also go ahead yeah. and say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it uh, yeah. came up in uh, yeah. Council on Aging meeting, 
and I had spoken to the uh, mayor about this a few weeks ago, and we have a couple of representatives of uh, folks from the center, but uh, they came to the council board with the idea of, because of Terry Moore's involvement and dedication and years of service to not just uh, count on aging, but the other uh, entities in that building and, and people in the community. I'd just like to recognize uh, that effort a little bit by naming a room uh, at the center. And uh, because it's a city-owned property, I uh, talked to the mayor, felt like it was a matter that should be discussed and have the entire council made aware of uh, because we're technically naming not a building but a room in a building. And uh, so I think the idea is the main cafeteria activity room uh, just to be named the Terry Moore cafeteria activity room or whatever they want to name that and putting some signage at the building so that anybody that goes in there uh, will recognize that it's just an honor uh, of Terry. Uh, those that go way back as I do and, and was working with Terry back when the old high school was there and her little office was down in the basement and the main thing she was worried about on a rainy day was making sure the buckets were placed in the right places to catch the drips coming down. Uh, that's where she started and and led that organization and those entities in that building uh, up to the day she died. And uh, so that's, we would be setting a bit of a precedent because we don't have city facilities named uh, after people. And again, this is not the building. It is just a room in the building and then folks in and the building on a daily basis would recognize the room as such. And if there was a community function, you would say it would be in the Terry Moore room. So uh, anything you would like to add to that at all, either one of you? I think that's, that's pretty clear, Mark. I appreciate that very much. Um, I'm the president of United Ministries and so worked with Terry for a while and she was very involved with um, making sure that that was an active part of the Rochester community and so we want to pay tribute to her in some way that will last for a while. So thank you Mark, very well put, appreciate it. Well, it certainly wouldn't be the program it is today without her uh, involvement in the past. So. So, do we need a so we would, I, I guess I would uh, make a motion that we would uh, allow the, the folks in the community center uh, to pick the room that they would like to name and, and, uh, and how they want to do that. And uh, I, I would like to move that we allow that in the community center. Second. All right. Second. All those in favor? David, we'll keep in touch and keep talking. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council. Uh, Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, moving down to our ordinances, we have two. Uh, because there are only four of us, we can only do the first two readings. We cannot do all three. Um, so we can do the first two readings and then we'll move those to the next, next meeting. And, uh, I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of ordinance number 14 2021 by town only. So moved. Second. Uh, second. All in favor? Okay. 
Ordinance number 14-2021, an ordinance amending the holidays for 2021. Um, Do you need an explanation? Um, would you like to give one? Make it a lot quicker than you trying to read through it. Sorry. Ultimately, last year with COVID, we, the mayor had, we normally would do a uh, holiday dinner for the employees and a gift card. Well, with COVID, we changed that. We added a holiday to it. It seemed to be a really, it, it was very well received. Um, so rather than spending the money on the food and a gift card, we, we'll do them. Yeah. Um, so the mayor decided this year again with COVID still kind of lingering that it might be a good option to do that again. So. That's what that was for. And what day are we asking? It's day Monday, day December 20th. I had put Wednesday, but I, I fixed it. Yes, mine is correct. <laughs> Monday what day? Monday, December 27th. The next meeting is the 28th. Are we have a special meeting then? Because we would otherwise be 28. Oh, yeah. Can it be retro? <clears throat> oh. Since we've introduced it. Good. You wouldn't have paid out for it yet. No, yeah, we would yeah, we won't pay out for it until well, that would be the pay week that week. But we'll meet before payroll, right? Would it have to be an ordinance or just Board of Works approving the change? No, it's in the it has to be a salary ordinance because it's a holiday. So it would need Adding to be in the salary ordinance because it's a paid holiday. So that's the Christmas gift? Uh huh. Show up and then take it already. No, that's right. Say, if we don't have no. meeting, that, uh, yeah, then, um, let's see here. Let me make sure I'm correct on the pay because we've got Board of Works meets on the 2nd, the 16th, and the 30th to approve the pay. Well, no, because the 27th will actually be in the very next pay, so it'll come out in the January, the first pay in January. Correct. Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. I'm going to a motion for the second reading, ordinance number 14 2021. So moved. Is that by title only? Moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right. Ordinance number 14 2021, an ordinance amending the holidays for 2021. Okay. Go a little further. Okay. We have another ordinance. Ordinance 15 2021, entertain a motion for the first reading. Ordinance 15 2021. So moved. Maybe we'd like the audience to know if they want to hear this, read the whole thing, or do you want all, to try all 95 pages? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we took some of it out for you guys. There, there was a whole other section that so we decided didn't need to be part of the mm -hmm. ordinance because it was just reference, right? Yeah. You're lucky. You're welcome. It's only 93 pages. <laughs> we yeah. just say the entire <laughs> for the third reading, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you second that? Uh, yes. All right. Move and second. All in favor? We can hear by title. Ordinance number 15 2021, an ordinance amending sewer use regulations. All right. Entertain a motion for the second reading of ordinance number 15 2021. So moved. By title only. Second. By title only. All right. Move and second. All those in favor? Ordinance number 15 2021, an ordinance amending sewer use regulations. The next meeting. All right, we're down to department reports. Chief Butler? Sure, my report by title only, month of October 2021. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Good evening. For the month of October, structure fires, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Trash fires, one in the city. Vehicle fires, two in Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms, three in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Ridgeland Township. Brush, brush fires, one in Rochester Township. Down power lines, one in the city. Accidents, three in the city, <coughs> one in Rochester Township. 
Medical assist, 17 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Lift assist, two in the city. CO checks, three in the city. Gas leaks, three in the city, three in Rochester Township. Elevator rescue, one in the city. Canceled calls, six in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Liberty Township for a total of 66 calls and we conducted one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you. For the month of October, we had 25 accidents. Uh, we issued 28 warnings, 46 offenses. Uh, there were 36 case reports, 507 calls for service, 32 lockouts, 9 towed vehicles, and 8 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were allowed for for the month. Other than that, our newest hire, our newest conditional offer um, was made to Bryce Michael. He went to Public Safety Medical today for testing and evaluation, and we'll get the results back within 10 to 12 days, and then have to submit that to PERF, assuming he passes everything. So we're looking after the first of the year before he actually starts. Other than that, that's about it, unless you have questions. Any questions for Chief? Is there an easy, short answer? The difference Decline. between aggravated battery and just plain battery? Seems no. you, you'd have to Easy be short answer now. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no? Not an easy short answer. Okay. Okay, I don't see Randy. Dwayne, you got a report for us? Yes, uh, leaves, leaves, leaves. <laughs> um, we just finished, we have four machines out right now. We just finished up on the east side of the lake today. And we'll start back in uh, on the west side of town tomorrow. And we worked uh, the last two Saturdays and some overtime during the week. Um, of course, the lease came down late this year, and so we're trying to get that. Um, now the majority of them are down. We're trying to get them cleaned up uh, before snowfall. So we um, also started today installing the brackets for the. Uh, Christmas uh, ornaments for poles, and uh, they'll finish that up tomorrow, and we'll have everything ready to uh, assist the fire department in putting those up on Sunday. And that's all I have, pending any questions. Any questions? All right. Marcus is not here. Derek on vacation again? That's <laughs> pressing. <laughs> of course. <Okay. laughs> Thank you. Um, Harry, you have anything for downtown partnership? Just brief. Um, chamber event is actually happening this weekend. It's not small business Saturday, and it continues all week. They have a bingo card where people can um, visit five, five in a row or five vertical, whatever businesses, and register for gift cards. And if they fill the whole thing, then they can win a chance at two hundred fifty bucks. It should be a nice little promotion and it's uh, businesses all throughout uh, Fulton County. And then the holiday stroll is slated for December 3rd. This is the evening event, uh, very popular. Santa comes to town. Um, there'll be a, a event that goes from 6 to 8 p.m. on Friday night. And there'll be hot chocolate and all kinds of little things around town. There'll be ice, hopefully some ice carving and uh, reindeer. Hopefully, good weather. That's all I got. Snow? Thank you. Can we hope for snow? For Watch snow? your mouth. <laughs> Any questions? Before or after, but not during. <laughs> <laughs> right. David is not here. I felt that from you, too. Ruth is not here. <laughs> okay. Fedco did meet last Friday. Um, news out of there. Derek let us know that the city records regarding black air were incorrect and instead of a six inch water line it's a 10 inch water line so that means the bid they had to continue that as incorrect um, and looking to get it upgraded the 10 inch PVC was actually more expensive than ductile iron so they're going with ductile iron to um, the property that um, Mitch is getting into and you watch growth landscaping. We'll go to that property and then kind of wait for some costs to come down because it's a 
it's quite a, it's an increase. Let's keep going. Um, Tiffany told us about a grant that T-Mobile is rolling out. It's a T-Mobile hometown grant. Um, it's up to $50,000 a quarter, and they're, they're basically targeting, um, as they put it, places where people connect, like uh, pavilions, um, little you know, small parks, uh, something that uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking at. Um, FICO is also taking bids from uh, consult consulting firms to kind of help us along in doing a little restructuring and you know kind of adopting some best practices. So uh, that's, that's all I have. Any questions? All right. Redevelopment Commission. Jason, not here. All right. Down to you, Mark. Easy. As long down, as to, down to me. That's right. Uh, well, yes, we had uh, BZA met last week. Had two items on the agenda. It was a little bit uh, different. Uh, actually, one was denied uh, as it was presented. I, I understand it. That there's a negotiation happening between the neighbors and the property line might change which would change the variances needed so they denied the variance that was requested uh, because the change in property line has not been approved so um, they they have been busy this year i don't think there's been a month without a meeting this year I don't think so. I don't think so, yeah. Activity has been way up. Uh, so, uh, and then Council on Aging met yesterday. We had a, a brief meeting. Uh, the RSVP announcing that uh, they're putting plans together for an Orlando trip February or March uh, next year. Don't know uh, exactly what all that's going to be or what it's going to cost at this point and then they are encouraging uh, anybody over 55 would like to join RSVP especially if they do volunteer work in the community there's no cost uh, to being a member of RSVP you do have to go to the center and uh, register show your driver's license but uh, they're going to be working on trying to get more people registered as RSVP members. From a Council on Aging, we are going to host a community health fair at Woodlawn Hospital on December 1st. It is free to everybody. Uh, and you don't have to be a senior citizen to uh, be welcomed there. I don't know m much more detail than that about what will be offered at the fair, but it is open to the community, to anybody. Uh, doing some computer work with the uh, Council on Aging and, and improving the backup uh, system and processes. So. Other than that, the uh, rides uh, are still going up and uh, still averaging 90 plus rides a day uh, with the uh, transpo and colder weather that's expected to go up even more again. So that was everything that we talked about. Unless there are questions, that's my report. Any questions? All right. Mr. Wilson. <coughs> the animal, animal Adoption Center postponed their meeting until December, so I'll have a report for them next meeting. Uh, Solid Waste District did meet um, over the last two months. They have collected 
$26,491.75 by turning in recyclables for funding. Um, in the month of August, the county landfill received 40,586.7 tons of waste. 14% of that was Fulton County. The rest was the state of Indiana. And we received $33,333 for that host fee. Um, for September, there were 39,218 tons, 23, sorry, 17% of that was Fulton County, and received that same amount for the district host fee. Other than that, we discussed uh, similar things to what we talked about today, the holiday schedule and salary payments for the employees there. And that was about it. Any questions? <coughs> Mr. Fitzwater, Chief Board EMS. I didn't hear the end of that. I'm doing more of the same thing. Tree Board met last week. They are uh, getting all of the, the latest contract for trees, removal and trimming, getting all that finished up. Uh, there's going to be some places where either soil wasn't filled in or grass wasn't planted, but right now it's going to have to be a whole lot of grass growing they were to put it down, so it's going to have to wait till spring. Uh, the ever-present list of trees that could be coming down, uh, we met with the, the city regarding uh, sidewalk issues, mainly in the uh, Precinct 1, Precinct 2, there's a lot of, uh, I assume there's a lot of older maple trees that are causing damage. So looking at, at some point, getting those done and redoing the, the uh, sidewalks. There's also the ongoing work with the planting new trees and there's a, I guess, a partnership with Duke Energy. They're going to help fund some money to get the trees replanted for us. So, uh, we had a gentleman from Duke who was at the meeting and seemed very positive in terms of helping to get things done. That's all I have for you, Board. Questions? Marvin, when you were you asked here for the Water Board report, would you like to give one? <laughs> all right. No John Garrett, moving on. Andy, do you have anything? I do not. Shout out any ADA concerns? I do not. Entertain a motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> Move and second. All those in favor? Thank you. Brian was a waste of time on that one. <laughs>